Card 75 from the 53 Bowman Color set, Saul Rogovin from the Chicago White Sox with the uh, the nice zip-up flannel jersey. So if it's card 75, that must mean that it is session number 75 of Card Room Live. Uh, I see some comments already. Um, no, we're not off this week. We were off last week, Carlisle, and we'll be off again next week. But today we're on. And for those of you that are new to this, uh, I have to mention that this is not a show. This is a hangout for fellow vintage collectors. Sometimes we have guests. Today we have a guest. But most of the time we just waste time looking at and talking about old cardboard. And through it all, we try to make it time well wasted. If you're here with us live, welcome. I hope you'll introduce yourself. If you're new to the YouTube community or to Card Room Live, make yourself at home. Introduce yourself. You're amongst friends. You're amongst collectors. If you're listening to this later, either going to or coming home from work, sorting cards, looking at eBay, walking the dog, sitting on the john, wondering if there'll be an Eddie Waitkus card shown tonight, wondering if Reese ND Card Ranger will ever do a video about his new card room like he promised he would. I told you I wouldn't forget Reese. Whatever you might be doing, I hope you get something out of it. If you want to get in touch or have ideas for future sessions, you can email me at bowman53channel at gmail.com. You can also find me on Bowman53 underscore Alex, 1953 Bowman Color on Twitter. And, of course, all that information is located in the description below. Let me just see who's here. Rocket Rick is here. Mike is here. Peter's here. Mookie's here. Stuke is here. Jason. Orlando's here. All of our best friends are here. Hodges. Hammer44. Three Rivers Card Collector. Dodgers27. Mitchell's here. Dan is here. A great group of people and more on the way, I'm sure. Um, I want to jump into this because we have a guest waiting in the wings. Um, and I'll, I'll explain how this all happened. But we have a very special guest tonight who's got some incredible stories and cards and just an overall incredible collection to share with us. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and bring him in now. Uh, here he is. Marty, and let me just see if I can fix the screen there. Oh, I got you muted there, my friend. Give me one sec. Let me fix that. There you go. Marty, also known as Signed1933 Gaudi on Instagram. Marty, how are you? Living the dream, Alex. <laughs> yeah, right. Live stream on a Sunday night. What could be better than that? Yeah, no kidding. Um, well, thanks for doing this. Happy to. Always uh, happy to get the cards out of the safe and dust them off and talk cardboard. None of my uh, really good buddies are baseball fans, uh, so like they don't like talking about cards or hearing about my cards. So anybody that's willing to uh, hear about some of my collection, I'm always happy to chat. Yeah, you're gonna have some. You're gonna have a, a a captive audience. I'll try to throw the the comments up on the screen so you can see them as they come. Um, so really briefly, I just wanted to mention how this happened. I mean, I'm, those of you that, that are on Instagram might already know about Marty. So the handle is sign1933gaudi. Um, you don't have a YouTube channel so far as I know, right? I do not. Okay. Um, but that's I think that's one of the cool things is that, you know, those of us that are on YouTube, some of us kind of sort of stay in that world. But there's a lot of other stuff going on. There's stuff on Twitter. There's stuff on Instagram. Um I was following you on Instagram for a while. And then we did, there was like a saber kind of random get together that you and I were a part of. And I didn't know who you were. And then you started showing cards. It's like, Oh my gosh, that's that guy. <laughs> that's um, the dude. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, it's so funny. Cause you know, especially on Instagram, because it's just the photographs of the cards. You don't really like, I, it sounds kind of silly, but like, I didn't really think about like, Oh yeah, there's somebody like, behind those cards so yeah. it was cool to meet you um so all right i got a bunch of questions but i thought instead of starting off with questions everybody wants to see the cards so show us a few of your personal favorite examples um and tell us a little bit about them uh well i'll skip around i, I think my we'll start with card number one in the set is uh benny bengal it's uh super hard to find this card in good condition because it's card number one and wow. it was often rubber banded 
and uh, it's just the the first uh, cards in the set were printed on a thinner card stock. So this is actually a, a PSA three with an auto of a nine. Uh, Benny Bengal um, was an awesome defensive catcher. Most people have really never heard of him, but he won three World Series with the Murderers Row Yankees. Um, he was a, a really, really, really good defensive catcher. Uh, but for some reason, the manager of the Yankees at the time wanted more offense. And um, he was roommates and good friends with Babe Ruth. And so he ended up getting injured, I think, in 29, um, had a little injury. And he probably could have came back from it. But um, he ended up getting replaced by... Uh, an, another fellow Arkansan, I am an Arkansan, uh, replaced by Bill Dickey, uh, who went on to be a 11 time all star and just, you know, amazing catcher. But uh, Benny really mentored uh, Bill Dickey and, and helped him out a lot. So, you know, these two are probably, well, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I've, I've been doing this for like 15 years. Um, so I, I think I'm always upgrading. Um, so, you know, I think the signatures on all of my cards are pretty phenomenal. Um, so I don't really pick out favorites. They're all my favorites. Right. Right. Sense. Um, I mean, it's really clear to me, like right off the bat that you also are like interested in the history too. Like it's yeah. not just the card for you. Like you, you, you already know like the history of the guy too. Um, is that, I mean, was that something that you had before you even started the, the collecting? Oh yeah, for sure. I'm um, a history nerd. I mean, you know, growing up in Arkansas, um, which is kind of the center of the universe, Arkansas is a really cool place. Most people, you know, fly over it or don't know much about it, but uh, uh, spring trainings were held here uh, right. for, for decades. And so all the the players that play that are in the 33 Gowdy set uh, played here um, for spring training. And so hot springs has a phenomenal history. Um, and so, uh, I just grew up, um, uh, always, um, liking older people. Um, <laughs> I liked hearing their stories, um, actually was a boy scout and volunteered at nursing homes to hang out with older folks, right. um, uh, as a 12 and 13 year old. And, uh, and that's how I actually kind of got started into this, um, uh, really was, um, I, I wrote to players when I was in junior high school. Wow. And so uh, I did through the mail a long time ago and I would write to players that played in the teens, twenties and thirties. Um, and I was a lifelong Red Sox fan and I liked the Brooklyn Dodgers, the history of the Brooklyn Dodgers. So I literally uh, had a keyboarding class and uh, the teacher, I was a little hyperactive and, and didn't really understand why I needed to take typing or know how to type. But she said, look, if you just be quiet, you can, you know, get an A. And so I literally <laughs> wrote letters and typing class every day. And my mom was kind enough to mail them. So I remember writing Eno Slaughter, uh, the great Cardinals player, Hall of yeah. Famer. Uh, Eno Slaughter was awesome. He would uh, he would sign and I'd get it back within a week. You know, I remember Eno oh, Slaughter. Um, there was a guy named uh, Tony Melanowski who played for the Brooklyn Dodgers, and he wrote me back. Um, I asked questions like, if, you know, what was their best memories of Arkansas and this and that, who their favorite teammate was. And uh, Tony Melanowski wrote me back and said, um, one of my favorite roommates that I ever had in the Pirates organization lives near you. I lost his phone number, but I have his address. Can you go by his house and say, uh, give me a call. Tell him Tony Melanowski said, give me a call to get his phone number down there. So I begged my mom to like drive me over to this random guy's house. And uh, it was Leo Nonenkamp who played for the Red Sox in the thirties and forties. And he yeah. was a pretty good outfielder. So ended up becoming really good friends with Leo Nonenkamp. And that oh, wow. cemented my uh, relationship with the, the Red Sox. Uh, he, told me a bunch of really cool stories and I was able to hook him up with a bunch of his former teammates too, including uh, George Kell, Hall of Famer. But uh, yeah, so I was a nerdy junior high, high school kid that <laughs> wrote to old men. So. Right, right. Well, so, okay, well then, I mean, you kind of got to start it off. My first question was going to be like, how did this, how did this begin for you? I mean, um, so it sounds like, you know, you were kind of writing to these guys and like doing TTM. At what point, 
did you say, okay, I'm going to go for this. I'm going to do 33 Gaudi. Did like, did that, like, did you know that right off the bat or did that kind of develop? No, I, you know, when I was junior high, high school, I graduated high school in 95. So you're looking probably more like 91, 92, 93 is the years I was really strongly doing it. And then, um, uh, there were reprint cards. This was way before eBay. And so I, I couldn't, and didn't really have a lot of money as a kid. So, um, I did a lot of the reprint cards if I could find them, the common sure. cards. And, um, I remember, uh, the 1953 Tops reprint set came out in 91. And so I actually wrote to every player that was in that set. And, wow. and I have that whole set autographed. That was the first set that I completed. Um, and that's Willie Mays, Mickey Mantle. That's all of them. Um, uh, Connie Marrero was one of the toughest ones. He was a, a catcher who was actually blind and lived in Cuba. And I was able to, to track him down. But uh, so that was a, a set that I completed later on, um, probably around 2007, 2006. Um, I, I had graduated in 95, went off to college. Yeah. Um, my mom called me around 2000 six ish and said hey i'm downsizing you need to come get some of your stuff and i went over there and it was uh, all my baseball stuff my baseball cards um i had gotten rid of almost everything i remember i was pretty broke when i was leaving for college so i sold everything unless it was personalized or sure. if it was a letter so i ended up keeping um all the letters and i was going through those you know i was you know single and no kids and had right. a real job and um was doing pretty good. I was like reading all these letters that I wrote as a kid and it was phenomenal. It brought back a ton of memories. And so uh, I was like, I want to write these guys back and say, you know, thanks for writing me back as a kid. And as I was going through them and researching them, I realized they had all passed away. Right. Right. Um, and except one, uh, Boo Ferris. Boo Ferris is a Red Sox Hall of Famer. He was an amazing pitcher. Um, he's from Mississippi, which is about three hours from me. And he built literally the Delta state, uh, baseball program. And so I, I realized he was still alive and he, he actually had a book coming out. So I wrote him a note and just said, Hey, I found this photo. Actually, weirdly enough, the photo, I did not plan this. I pulled this and posted it on Instagram, but, uh, Boo, Boo Ferris sent me this as a kid. Um, and I found it, I guess this is about 07. And I wrote him back and said, Hey, I found this photo. I'm going to get it framed up. I appreciate you taking time, uh, you know, to, to, you know, send this to me as a kid. I'm doing good. I got out of college and I threw in my business card and he ended up calling me a couple of days later and said, Hey, come down, come to a baseball game with me. And um, he's got a, a big museum uh, at Delta state where all mm. his baseball stuff is. So I went, I was like, yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. So I drove down and spent the day with Boo Ferris, which was amazing. Wow. And got to know him. And then that kind of sparked the interest again. And I had a little, I had disposable money and eBay was a thing. And so I could yeah. buy cards. And so I started buying cards of players in the fifties. I, I worked on the 59 top set um, for a long time. And then I was doing through the mail a ton. Uh, and of course, you know, all the guys in the 33 Gaudi set were, had already passed away. Um, and so I got really active on sportscollectors.net. Okay. And, and um, I met two other collectors that um, were really kind of inspiring. And an, another collector was collecting the set signed, uh, the 33 Gaudi set. Wow. And um, he, uh, we had a lot of the similar interests. He's a lawyer in Oklahoma and, um, you know, I'm in Arkansas. And so I don't know. We just, we, we kind of bonded. I, he was, I was inspired by him. Even though he was a little bit younger than me, he had a little more disposable income. And, he was just a sleuth like I was, and he found some right. unbelievable collections and he would flip me his extra cards. Um, mm -hmm. So if he had two or three extras, he would, you know, he would trade me one. And then uh, I thought it was cool to, it'd be cool to get like 10 or 20. I remember I had a PSA display case that held 20 cards. And I was like, it'd be cool to get 20 of the 33 Gaudi sign. And yeah, I got 20 and then I got 50 and then I got <laughs> 100 and then, um, then you know the 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 collectors that collect these it's a small community and so you meet you find out who they are and where they live and what they're doing and who they need and so um you know eventually uh my friend in oklahoma he built the most complete set at the time and uh he auctioned his off and i was mm -hmm. in a position 
where I could pick up a few extra cards. And so when he auctioned his uh, collection off, um, I was able to get some rare ones. And then um, Uncle Jimmy passed away. Uh, Uncle Jimmy right. um, was a World War II veteran, 97 year old New Jersey guy that passed away. And I was blown away, um, not because of, you know, the scope of his collection, which was amazing, but um, I was blown away by the rare cards that he had. Mm. Um, the, you know, I built this network where people all over the country would go to card shows on the weekends and send me text photos of 33 Gaudi cards and say, do you have this one? Is this an upgrade? Sure. So I had a, a really good network of people that are always looking out for me. And my phone blew up that morning. Uh, the Today Show ran the story of the passing of Uncle Jimmy. Uncle Jimmy, um, big Italian family. He uh, uh, never had, never got married, never had kids. He had one job in a factory for 30 years, uh, 40 years, I think. And then he retired from there and then became a janitor at a school. And uh, he was loved by his family. His nieces and nephew loved him. And he uh, told them all, he said, Hey, when I die, you're all going to be millionaires. Cause I got this huge baseball park collection up in the attic, you know? And um, of course, nobody really believed him. And then he passed and he had one of the most remarkable collections. He had, um, there are four Babe Ruths in the set. Um, yeah. He had, he had six of them signed. Wow. Uh, so he had all four, that alone. All yeah. four and two extras. One of them sold for $680,000. Um, one of them. The red one. Um, so the story broke on the Today Show and my phone blew up and um, I ended up calling the auction house and was like, hey, I'm the Gowdy guy. Like, can you send me a list? Can you send me a list? And it took them a couple of weeks and me bugging them quite a bit. And they finally sent me the list. And, you know, I could really care less about the Babe Ruth because Babe Ruth signed a lot. And um, and I knew I wasn't going to spend what they were going to go um, for. So I ended up targeting a few cards like Val Pinich. Mm -hmm. um, Val Pinich, um, amazing player, utility player. He played from like 1919 to 1933. He retired um, in 33. Uh, he was a Brooklyn Dodger. And so he retired at the end of 1933, moved to Maine, bought a chicken farm, and died of the flu in 1942. Wow. <laughs> so there were no known signed Val Pinich cards. Um, we had never seen one, the 33 Gaudi collectors, and Uncle Jimmy had two of them. So um, this is the nicest known example. I was able to pick that one up. I'm thrilled to have that one. So this is yeah. crazy to hold this card because, um, you know, he retired in 33. So I'm assuming that Uncle Jimmy did a lot of through the mail. He did do a lot of through the mail, but sure. he did do some in-person signing. So I'm assuming that he went to Brooklyn and got this card signed in person and um, you know, owned it for 80 plus years, and I'm the second owner of it. So that's crazy. Wow. Yeah, it's it's phenomenal. So um yeah. I, I look at it as I'm just the caretaker of these pieces of cardboard. So. Yeah, and you know, it's funny because the obviously the older the card the more sort of legendary the signature because nowadays it's become such an industry and we all know you can go to a card show or some event and there's a line and you get the guy to sign it but the mm -hmm. idea that like this guy went and found the guy in brooklyn and got him to sign it is like it's such a great story yeah um all right so how about uh, a couple cards from your set that you think are underappreciated, undervalued, or maybe just not as well known as, as they should be. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll start with one uh, that people, have, people know Dazzy Vance. I mean, you, yes. Like if you're a baseball fan, you, you know, Dazzy Vance. I mean, Dazzy Vance was, you know, a phenomenal, phenomenal pitcher. Uh, but, you know, I think he's underappreciated, even though he was, you know, elected to the hall of fame, he died in 1961 and was elected to the hall in 55. So, I mean, the guy certainly got his roses when he was alive, but what's phenomenal is he only pitched 33 innings in his twenties. Wow. His whole career was age 30 and beyond. So he yeah, won yeah. 197 wins in his thirties. I mean, imagine if this guy would have, you know, been able to make it to the majors in uh, 
in, you know, his prime, you know, I would love to have seen him, but uh, Dazzy Vance, uh, this is one of the few cards I'm, I'm, I don't care about, I'm not endorsing PSA, but PSA, I'm number one on the PSA set registry. I need to cross some of these over, but uh, I've got, you know, all of, all of my cards, I, most of them, I know where they came from. Right. Um, so, um, but I think Dazzy Vance, probably needs more love. I think he's really undervalued uh, mm -hmm. uh, overall. Um, and uh, I picked out another guy too. Sure. Uh, well, I picked out a bunch, but uh, Mickey Cochran, um, one of the greatest catchers of all time. I just love this autograph. I mean, it's the, the card is a 4.5. The auto is an eight. It's super clean card. You know, he was a 320 lifetime hitter. Uh, he passed away in 1962, so there's not a you know a ton of these floating around. Mm -hmm. Three time, three time World Series champ, two time American League MVP. Um, anyway, just one of the greatest catchers of all time, right? Cocker, so let's talk about um, the autographs. Now you've you've kind of already set this up a little bit because you've got yeah. some personal connection to it, whether it was like writing the guys or just knowing the history of where the cards came from, but. Um, you know, this is a this is always a hot topic amongst collectors, which is the authenticity of the autograph or like, you know, where did it come from or what's the story? So I'm just curious, like, you know, obviously, I'm sure it's been a learning process for you over the years. What where do you stand with that now? Like what what are some of your like like go to bullet points, I guess, when it comes to autographs and cards, especially from this era, from the 30s? Yeah, I mean, it's a shame, you know, the collecting community, if you're if people are collecting something, someone's going to try to, um, you know, be a fraud. And, you know, there was a big T206 scandal where there was a guy that was um, forging a lot of the T206 cards and they were selling for big money before they, they got caught. Um, you know, obviously, uh, provenance to me is king, you know, so uncle Jimmy, I have 217 of the 239 cards in the set autographed. So, um, I think I am the fourth person ever to have over 200 cards in this set signed. Um, there's a very limited number of these cards, obviously. So the other four people, I know who they were or are, I know where my cards come from or came from. Uh, Uncle Jimmy is one example. He was the, the latest treasure trove that was uh, uncovered. Uh, Uncle Jimmy did not have 200 different cards in the set sign, though. He had the best of the best, but he only had 175 different cards in the set signed, and he had 50 duplicate cards, uh, mm -hmm. extra cards. So I'm secretly trying to put together Uncle Jimmy's collection. I have um, close to close to 60 of his signed 33 Gaudis. Wow. So um, I'm always, you know, if anybody out there sees any at a card show or whatever, text me um, or find me on Instagram. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to put together Uncle Jimmy's collection again. Um, there are two other big collections. And I, I did this probably two years ago. And I, I hate that I did this. Um, I told people that I was writing a book about the 33 Gaudi set and I am, and it's so close to being finished. I'm going to finish it this year. I swear, I promise. But in my book, I tell the story of um, three big collectors and uncle Jimmy is one of them. Uh, another one is um, a Detroit tiger ball boy who passed away. Um, in the early 2000s, he was a Detroit Tiger ball boy, I believe from like 35 to 36, something uh, around that era. Um, my friend that I mentioned earlier in Oklahoma uh, tracked this guy down. He passed away and his kids, uh, I think it was grandkids, had some of his collection, his signed 33 Gaudi cards. And uh, we're actually in the process of starting the process to consign them to an auction house. Right. Um, he ended up tracking the family down um, and then showed up at their house in Detroit with $25,000 cash and offered to buy all of the cards without a middleman. And uh, they initially turned him down and they, he, they showed him the collection and um, he said, look, this is, this is cash right here, right now. And he put it on the table and the guy took it. So um, um, 
that's a pretty cool collection. I have yeah. quite a few of those cards uh, from the Detroit Tiger Ball Boy. And then there's another really famous uh, collection that was probably the first really famous collection of 33 Gaudi cards. There was a, a kid named Leahy who lived in New York City who got cards signed outside of the Yankee Stadium subway platform. And he was apparently a little OCD because he drew a red line on the cards where he wanted the players to sign. <laughs> and um, his collection came to light really in the 90s. Um, and I was able to track down um, his, I've actually talked to his granddaughter and he sold the cards himself like in the, in the 90s to a collector that lives in Virginia. And I was able to talk to that person um, and so, uh, I've got a pretty good list of what he had and I have quite a few of his cards. So I tell the story of Leahy of the Detroit tiger ball, ball boy and uncle Jimmy. Um, and there's a few other like modern collectors, um, that are still around that are a little bit older than me, but you know, they did a, a lot of through the mail and other stuff to, to get their card signed. So again, I just look at it like I'm a caretaker of this collection and I'm constantly curating um i want it to be you know the best of the best and um so i'm you know i think the the book not only tells the story of the 33 gaudy gum company and and that's a cool story in and of itself um their marketing was amazing uh, they advertised the 240 card set and they left out card number 106 yeah so, right so kids all summer long were, you know, out there trying to complete their sets and buying these penny packs of gum. They were the first bubble gum cards and and they couldn't do it. And um, Uncle Jimmy's uh, or I just made up that like a, there was a kid whose dad uh, got upset and apparently uh, got the U.S. government involved. And the U.S. government sent a demand letter to Gowdy and said, <laughs> you have to print card 106. <laughs> and they printed it in. 34, which is the Lajue card. Right, uh, right. And so that was another super rare. But anyway, I, you know, the, the book is, is, it's close. Um, I'm, I'm working on the photographs. I really want to have all my cards in there photographed nicely and presented uh, in there because, um, you know, just, I, I just want the collection to be shown together. And sure. then I've got two little kids that, you know, one day I'll auction them off, but I think they can have the book and say, Hey, my dad did this. You know, right, maybe right, they'll think right. it's cool. So, well, I mean, I understand why the book may not be done yet, but now that you've mentioned it, everybody in here is now going to follow you on Instagram and be asking you about it. So, um. yeah, it's funny. It's like everywhere I go. And it's funny, like the, uh, the whole precipice of, of like doing this, like I collected for years and years and years. And, and again, super introverted private person, um, and during the pandemic, I had a, a friend of mine's father who's a big baseball fan. And I, I asked him to come over. I was like, Hey, you, I'm going to go by the bank and get all the cards and I'll set them up at the, the dining room table. And this old guy came in and he was like, Oh my God, this is amazing. And he ended up going through my collection, um, which I have a ton of 2206 cards and, and other things too. And, yeah. and he asked me to do, he was a member of our local Sabre chapter and he yeah. asked me to do a presentation. And so that's how I got connected with, with Sabre okay. and created the Instagram account and decided, you know, I was going to write a book, you know, because of, you know, him coming by and looking at my collection. So, right. Fantastic. Um, how about uh, a few of your cards that you think, have the nicest looking signatures oh man they all do they all yeah. do honestly because like um the, the the penmanship was actually taught in school back then and you know like they right. took the I mean, time to to write i mean and and literally like you can go on my instagram account and like just look at look at some of my cards i mean like i'll, I'll roll through this because I'll, I'll i'll show you this and and i mentioned i'm from arkansas so we'll, we'll do yeah this. So I showed Bill Dickey. Um, this is Travis Jackson, you know, is another uh, Arkansas Hall of Famer. Uh, he was a great shortstop, you know. Uh, you know, his signature, this right here, is one of the nicest uh, Travis Jackson cards out there. Mm -hmm. uh, one that I really, really love and I'm super proud of is this Lon Warnicky. Uh, most people have never heard of Lon Warnicky. Uh, it's a shame because Lon Warnicky was pretty dang amazing. He was uh, 
the first starting pitcher in all-star history. Um, he actually hit the first triple in all-star history. So the, the pitcher here could rake. He was really awesome. Um, he was a five-time all-star. All -star, um, he um, led the National League in wins in 1932. He won 192 games. And what's so fascinating about Lon Warnicke is he grew, like, here's Dizzy Dean. They were born, like, 20 miles apart, less than six months apart from each other. Wow. And you're talking about two of the most dominant pitchers of the 30s uh, combined for well over 300 wins. And, and Dizzy Dean gets all the, the accolades, rightfully so. But, you know, Warnicke was actually a five-time All-Star. Uh, Dizzy Dean was a four-time All-Star. Um, Warnicke won 192 games. Um, you know, I think Dizzy Dean only won 150. Uh, so, uh, you know, Long Warnicke is not very – not as appreciated as much as he should be, but look at those signatures on those cards. I mean, yeah. these are these are just beautiful examples of two phenomenal pitchers, right? Um, to come out of Arkansas. You know, I I um, have a few autographs in my collection, mostly baseballs and um, from different eras, some from the '40s and '50s and so on. But I have a lot of modern ones too. And I, I like just recently, I'm a Phillies fan. I just picked up like Bryce Harper and. Who else did I get? A couple other guys. And I'm glad to have them. But I, when I was like looking at them, I'm like, gosh, these guys just, their signatures are so boring. Like yeah. when, I, when I look at these guys from the thirties, it's like, they're just like, it's almost artwork in and of itself, just the way that they signed. Yeah. They, they, they cared for, and you can't say like, I'm sorry to Bryce Harper and any of the modern guys. <laughs> they're like, you know, like whatever, you can't say you're getting hounded for your autograph. We're talking about Babe Ruth. Has anybody ever seen an ugly Babe Ruth autograph? Right, no. right. I mean, Babe Ruth would stop and he would take the time to sign. And and all of these guys did. If you're going to do it, you know, do it right. And they certainly did. They certainly did. Right. Um, you kind of you kind of touched upon this a little bit, but which of your cards were perhaps the hardest to find in terms of autographs? I mean, they're they're always going to be hard in some way or, or or another. But which which for you are like cards that stand out in terms of you know, tracking them down. Well, I mean, I've got so many that are the, the only known example. I mean, the Val Pinnich was, you know, one example. Uh, this one's a, a tough one. Uh, Charlie Jamison um, was a phenomenal p player. I mean, I, I'm trying to, I wrote down some notes. I think he was a Detroit Tiger, um, uh, er, not Detroit Tiger, Cleveland Indians. He was a Cleveland right. Indian uh, Hall of Famer, lifetime 303 hitter. Uh, he died in 1969. So this card right here is the only known example of Charlie Jamison autographed. And so I knew the three previous owners uh, before I was able to snag this card. So again, it's like building relationships with, with other collectors, knowing what they have. Um, and then uh, this one right here is just a super cool story too. Is uh, uh, This is another Uncle Jimmy card. This was one that we did not know existed. Um, I don't speak Polish, so I'm not going to like hurt his name. Kill his name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, the cool thing about this card, it's the only signed example where he signed it with his Polish name. Because uh -oh. in January of 1934, he got sick of Irish guys like me hacking his name. So he changed his name to Pete Appleton. Whoa. So Pete Appleton is who this guy is. And he signed one other 33 Gowdy that was signed Pete Appleton. But this is um, there's only two known exist. And one is his his actual birth name. And the other one is uh, Appleton. So so this one's super, super tough to get as well. Um, I don't know. So many of them passed away in the you know 30s, 40s, uh, 50s. Um, you know, just tracking them down. I think they're out there. Um, this is another one that I just fell in love with. And because so much of these is like, you know, you get the cards. And for me, I'm learning about the players and right. learning about their history. And, you know, so many of them I didn't know anything about. And so that was kind of shocking for me when I'm like, how did I not know about Adolfo Luque? Adolfo mm -hmm. Luque was just a phenomenal pitcher. He was the first Latin American pitcher to make it to the major leagues. 
Um, he, I think he died in like 51 or 52, um, but he pitched from like 1915 to 1933. He won his first World Series uh, for the Reds in 1919 and his last World Series uh, with the Giants in 1933. He was the oldest pitcher to win a World Series game. Um, he's in the Mexican Baseball Hall of Fame, the Cuban Baseball Hall of Fame. Um, right. the, I mean, he, he's just an underappreciated star uh, and should be um, definitely, and I think should be in the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame. Just look at his stats. Um, yeah. This is the nicest known Adolfo Luque sign card known to exist. Super thrilled to have that one. Yeah. So, I mean, how did I track them down? I mean, you know, uh, will I ever finish? I don't think I'll ever finish the set. I mean, uh, I've got 217 uh, right now. Um, I know there's two other collectors that are older gentlemen that uh, have several of the cards that I need. Um, Time's on my side. I'm in my mid forties. So, I mean, I, you know, I've joked with them, you know, like, uh, they know, they know how to get in touch with me. Their families know how to get in touch with me, and <laughs> get rid of their cards or if something happens. So it's really just about building relationships. And, uh, you know, I mean, I think people see that I really care about the cards. It's to me, yeah. it's not, I don't care about money. I don't care about, you know, the, the value. I don't care. I mean, I care about just like keeping the cards. I mean, these, like, I, I really look at myself as a caretaker of these cards and that's why I enjoy doing this. Cause I think people deserve to see these cards. Yeah. And so, so actually during the pandemic, I set up at my first baseball card show and it, and like, I'm saying this as humbly as possible, but it was the coolest flex ever. Like I, <laughs> I showed up at a local card shop or a local card show here in Little Rock and I had three tables and I had these super nice cases and they were all filled with signed 33 Gaudis and T206 cards and nothing was for sale. And like, right. I, I literally like show up and everybody's like whispering, like, who is this guy? Where is he from? And I'm like, dude, I'm an eighth generation Arkansan. Like I'm, I'm, I'm Little Rock, you know, this, I'm, this is my place, you know, and right. I'm just here to show my cards. And it was, it was awesome. So uh, that was a really good experience. And so now I, I kind of creep at our local card shows every once in a while. I actually went to one today. Um, but again, you know, trying to find these um, it's tough, but you know, I've got, save searches on eBay. And then fortunately sure. a lot of, a lot of people that go to all the card shows. So they're, they're looking out for me. Right. What, what I love about your story though, is that like, it's so personal in the sense that your search requires, it sounds to me like your search requires you to make relationships and find people. It's not random searches on eBay. Like we might ordinarily do for, for cards. I mean, most of my, most of the stuff I've ever gotten has been through, you know, yeah. a card show or eBay or whatever, but this sounds like, like you said, a little bit of like detective work. I've got to find people and like make connections and hear stories. And like, that's like this whole other level to this, which I think um, is so amazing. And I'm glad you're writing a book because the book can then, um, I guess, encapsulate all of these experiences that you've had with these cards. It's like, it's not just, oh my gosh, this is a signed Gaudi card. It's like, yeah. And there's like so much more of a story behind that too. Yeah, for sure. A uh, couple of the stories that I really like. There was a, a guy that I got a lot of my collection from, um, Sean Brennan, who's probably in his 50s now. He lives in Illinois. Um, he got his first signed 33 Gaudi card in the 80s. And so he started writing to players uh, and getting a lot through the mail. Um, he was a big caretaker and and got over 200 of the, the cards in the set signed. And he sold all of his cards to the guy in Oklahoma because the guy in Oklahoma, again, I think was a lot like me. And, and he could tell it, we were really trying to preserve them. So, um, you know, a couple of the cards I'll skip, but Willis yeah. Hudlin, Willis Hudlin um, is he was a, a really good pitcher for the Cleveland Indians. Um, Willis Hudlin is the only player in the 33 Gaudi set that I actually got to meet. Um, a, a, as a kid, he worked at a sporting goods store a couple miles down the street from me. I didn't have a 33 Gaudi for him to sign, uh, but I went down and he signed a baseball for me and a Cleveland Indians hat. He gave up Babe Ruth's 500th home run, uh -huh. uh, but he was a really awesome pitcher. I mean, him and there was another pitcher, Mel Harder, that were 
both really phenomenal uh, pitchers for Cleveland. So he's in that set. But my friend Sean Brennan, uh, he said he sent dozens of Willis Hudlin 33 Gowdy cards. So to, to get Willis to sign because he was such a gracious through the mail signer. And so he had like 12 or 13 of these signs. And so it's because of the guys that, you know, cared enough to, to write through the mail that I right. was able to, to get some of these for the guys that lived a little bit later. Uh, and then the stories like this is another, um, scrub eddie collins i don't know if anybody's ever heard of eddie collins you know, <laughs> just kidding uh lifetime 333 hitter uh six-time world series champ um 1939 hall of fame class uh signature for eddie collins is just amazing he died in 1951 so i mean there's not a ton of these floating around um this is a super cool example because you'll you'll see it's made out to it says best wishes to Jimmy Kehi, Eddie Collins, and so what was fascinating about this card to me is I had this other card that was also made out to Jimmy Kehi, oh, and God. it was it was dated June third of nineteen thirty six, uh, and so this card right here that's signed to Jimmy Kehi. I looked up the date and um, it was a game in Chicago. Um, and um, like this guy that signed the card actually didn't play uh, on the game and they're during the game. So like, I, you know, it's cool to like, this was a, a game day autograph at the stadium. Right. You know, so that's cool. And so there's actually one other card, 33 Gabby card signed to Jimmy Kehe, and it's a Benny Bengal card, uh, who's the, the catcher card that I showed earlier. Um, I could have gotten that one, but a friend of mine in New York who's also collecting the set needed Benny Bengal. And so I was like, I've got the nicest one. You can get that <laughs> one. And so, uh, and he's an older gentleman too. So he knows that I would like to get all three of these back. But Sean Brennan had these three cards together um, and kind of preserved them together for a while. And so, you know, just this is the stories. I mean, it's like, you know, um, it, it's cool. It's a cool niche hobby. And um, I love the set. Uh, I love the history of the set. And right. uh, I love the artwork. Um, yeah. Well, I was going to ask you, like, why 33? I mean, I know, I can imagine why, but like, why 33 Gowdy? Well, I mean, it's the big three. I mean, you know, the, the T206 set is, it's called a monster for a reason. You know, I, I, worked on it for years. I had several hundred uh, T206 cards. I actually had a, quite a few of them autographed um, and ended up selling a lot of them off during the pandemic Pandemic because I knew the prices were going to crash. I mean, there's there's the number of T206 cards that are out there. There's a ton out there. So, I mean, they're not rare by any stretch. So I sold a lot of the stuff that I was sitting on during the pandemic um, and did really well. Um, Again, 33 Gowdy, I just think it's loaded with Hall of Famers. I mean, there's so many Hall of Famers, uh, knowing they all played in Arkansas, knowing there's so many Arkansans in the set. Like, people mm -hmm. don't realize, like, there's so many Arkansans in the set. Um, so they have ties to, you know, places that I am at. Um, and the artwork is phenomenal. I'm a big fan yeah. of art. And so, um, and they're the first bubblegum cards, you know, yes. someone that right. grew up opening 86 tops and 87 tops, you know, it's like, <laughs> how could you not like bubble gum, you know? For sure. We got a couple of uh, comments from the chat. Here's one from uh, hammer 44. When did you realize you were fully committed to this quest? Cause I mean, you're definitely committed to this. Yeah, I'm definitely committed. <laughs> I need to be committed. Um, I, I, I guess probably when I got to a hundred, um, when I got to a hundred, probably, it's probably like a 150 mark because I um, when when my friend sold his collection off in I think it was in 2018, it was at uh, an REA auction, and um, he had several cards that I wanted, and 
I knew it might be the only chance to get them. And so I had other cards that I submitted, I actually had built an almost complete uh, 33 Gaudi set uh, PSA 2. And so I, I consigned that at the same REA auction. And that was really hard because I, I don't have signed Babe Ruth, um, obviously now. Um, I you could have gotten those. I had opportunities to get those for like three or four grand. and. Mm. I just didn't have, I didn't have the money. Uh, I mean, I didn't have three or four grand. I remember when I started this, um, spending a thousand dollars for the first time on a card. And yeah. it was like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, this yes. is a thousand dollars, you know? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think I got in at the right time. I was able to build a big portion of them. I was able to get to know people, but I guess I went all in probably around 2017, 2018. Okay. I think. Uh, do any of your cards include unsigned? Uh, sorry, from your collection, any unsigned 33 Gaudis? Um, I've got some 33 Gaudi proof cards um, that are not signed. Um, wow. Yeah. Uh, Willis Hudlin is one of those. Um, they're actually, I'll grab them because they're kind of cool. Yeah. And, and it, again, it goes to like building relationships. Um, I went to New York this summer. Two of the other collectors that between the three of us, we have well over 733 Gaudi signed. And so they both live in New York City. And so I went up um, to New York this summer and we all kind of got together and, you know, flexed. It was like the three of us, like this is super cool. And we, you know, I covet several of their cards um, and they covet quite a few of mine too. But, you know, again, it's just like, getting together with those guys was awesome. And then we're talking 33 Gaudis and they collect the, um, one of the guys also collects the, um, the copyright cards. Like they, they, they came out a few years ago, like Gaudi had done trademarks of all their, their cards. They're like little three by five cards. Um, anyway, it's like, you got to get in the weeds for that stuff. Um, sure. but anyway, like they were talking about printing proofs of, um, the cards. Oh, wow. And, and one of my buddies was like, yeah, I've got a bunch of the printing proofs. And I, and he mentioned Willis Hudlin and I was like, that, Willis Hudlin was the only guy that I met. So, you know, he, he gave these to me. So That's incredible. Yeah. Super awesome gift that will be in my collection forever. So as of right now, no, all of my 33 Gaudis are signed. Um, but I, I, I do have a list of cards that I'm, collections and sets that I'm working on and I'm thinking about going to head and, and getting the ones that um that I don't have signed I'm thinking about going and buying them uh there's four a lot of people ask this is it even possible it's not possible there's four cards in the set that have never uh turned up signed hmm. um and there are four common guys that nobody's ever heard of um but I have hope that they're out there and that they're sure. turn up one day so yeah uh, we've got a lot of questions about whether or not you will ever start a YouTube channel. Mm, I'll never say <laughs> never. Never say never. Uh, never say never. Right. Um, do you have any other Ruth autographs? Um, no, I don't have any Babe Ruth autographs. Okay. Um, yeah, it's funny you mentioned like, certain like i mean you i mean i i wasn't aware of collecting or i wasn't into collecting when a babe ruth autograph would have been like you know a few thousand dollars but like the idea that that was possible at one time oh, yeah. and then it just keeps skyrocketing yeah um and the prices are going to continue to come down i'm sorry everybody i mean it, for those of us that are like serious collectors lifelong collectors i mean we we just know i mean i, I you could get a babe ruth in 2018 you could get a psa 2 babe ruth for you know $2,300, $2,200, $1,700. I mean, I, I have the whole collection. So uh, as great as Babe Ruth is, as um, great as most of these players are, there there's so many of them out there that, you know, it's like the Michael Jordan rookie card. I mean, there's right. their, their prices are going to continue to come down, uh, I think, over the next 18 months. So, Right. Um, well, let's see. Any... Any sort of advice for a collector who wants to, whether it's like specifically this set looking for like an autographed card or just like 
earlier sets where perhaps, you know, uh, finding a card autographed by a player is maybe not as common as, as it has become. Um, so your just advice on trying to find signed cards or yeah, like especially from like this era. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, figure out who you like. I really like Leo DeRocher. I think um, yeah. he's. I'm a fan of him and his career. And since I mentioned uh, him, I'll I'll show a uh, card that that's kind of cool because uh, Rabbit bought Leo DeRocher his first glove. Uh, Leo DeRocher was an immigrant kid from Canada, Canada and, and lived in the neighborhood and uh, his dad passed away when he was young. And so um, Hall of Famer here, great defensive player in his own right. Uh, and a beautiful, Rabbit, signature. beautiful signature. So Rabbit, you know, took care of the of Leo and, and bought him his first baseball glove. So um, uh, Figure out what it is you like. Don't, I mean, don't just randomly, and we're all guilty of it. I'll go on eBay and buy random stuff, you know, I mean, but I just try to stay in your lane. Um, I mean, I don't care if you're, you know, well, maybe not Warren Buffett, but I mean, if you're like, you know, if you, if money, is, money is an object for all of us, you know, so like just pick out what you want to do and master your universe. I, I say that all the time in my job and my career. I master master your universe, like figure out what it is you want to do and be the best at it. So if you like, you know, 52 tops or whatever, um, there is a community that collects what you like. So go find them. and. Right. Uh, mentor. I mean, look for a mentor. I, there's, I'm really hopeful because there's two younger guys that are in their late twenties that are um, purchase all of my duplicates. I'm, I'm always upgrading. And so they reach out and, you know, they, they know me and trust me and they're, you know, asking me questions and, and it's been a great joy over the last two years, like seeing their collections grow. Um, so you know, I think figure out what it is you like, what you want mm -hmm. to collect, and then find the community um, and the community will take you in because, right. you know, I, I learned everything that I know about 33s from other collectors. So, mm -hmm. no, that's great advice. Um, we are getting close to wrapping up, but I'm wondering if there's any any uh, last cards you want to. Yeah, you know, right here. as I as I thumb past Rogers Hornsby. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, yeah, I'll show Rogers Hornsby because uh, you have to. The Raja, one of the greatest hitters of all time. It's my uh, PSA nine, Rogers Hornsby. He has two cards in the set. I'm looking for the horizontal card. Uh, but anyway, great signature on that. It's an yeah, auto yeah. grade of a nine. Uh, another uh, Hall of Famer that doesn't get a lot of love is Epa Rixie. Um, yes. Yeah, super tough autograph to get. Um, I think there's only like three of these that are signed that I've seen. This is the nicest example by far. You know, he won uh, 266 games. He was a um, uh, brilliant dude. He actually went to uh, undergrad at the University of Virginia and taught Latin um, in the offseason. Uh, anyway, super Super underappreciated. I was just that. reading about Epo Rixi today. I'm doing a video on some pre-war cards, and and one of them is Epo Rixi. So that's pretty. That, that, that's perfect. crazy. So the universe brings us together. Yeah. Uh, Jack Quinn um, is one of the few players that actually has a T206 card and a 33 Gaudi. Um, this is a, another really rare one. He died in 1946. Um, he was a pitcher. Played from 1909 to 1933. So you're talking about the Nolan Ryan of his day, right there. Uh, super, uh, super awesome pitcher. He won two World Series. I think he won close to 250 games in his career. And then a guy, and the last one, uh, I could keep going, but I'll stop. Uh, <laughs> Sam Sam Rice. Um, tragic story. Like, look up his story. His um, He was a minor leaguer. I think he lived in Illinois. Um, his um, He was out – like on a road trip and a tornado hit his family farm and Whoa. killed, killed his wife, killed his two young children, killed his mother, killed his father, killed like his whole family. So he, he's out on a baseball playing, you know, somewhere he gets home and his whole life is just turned upside down and he goes crazy. 
um, literally, and just like walks away. No one knew what happened to him. He ended up joining the Navy, uh, was on a ship for a couple of years, and then comes back and is like super focused and becomes a Hall of Famer. Uh, but look up Sam Rice's story. It's gut-wrenching, heart-wrenching. Um, the insane thing is after he was inducted in the Hall of Fame, someone came around and interviewed him and he had gotten remarried and um, they interviewed him and the, the guy that was interviewing him asked him about the tragedy and his wife knew nothing about it. Like he never talked about it. And so um, anyway, I'm, the, the human stories of the human side of these cards are, are real. They're there. So learn about the players. Um, they're, they're not just, they're not just cool cards to look at. They're, they're actual people. So. Right. No, I couldn't agree more. I did the same thing with the, with the 53 Bellman set. Um, yeah. yeah uh, this is probably a good place for us to, to finish up. Just wanted to say real quick guys, um, we will not be uh, doing another card room live next weekend. I'll be out of town, uh, but the following weekend we'll do a good old fashioned random session uh, where we're just going to be looking at and talking about cards going on eBay, etc. But um that's going to be it for this one so i want to say marty thank you so much for your time really quickly i want to put this up on the screen uh i've got your uh instagram page opened up here so anybody that doesn't uh already follow marty the handle is signed 1933 gowdy um and as you go through it you're going to see that he uh, he does collect other stuff we kind of ran out of time but he does collect things that are not 1933 Gowdy. Um, yeah. So you can kind of look through there and, and uh, enjoy the collection beyond tonight's chat. So um, anyway, that's it. So Marty, thanks again for, for jumping on. Appreciate it. Thank you, Alex. Thanks for all you do for the hobby and hey. the community that you've built. It's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Have a great rest of your Sunday night, and I'll see you in a couple weeks. Good night.